Hello, and welcome to Topics in Algebra and Knots. My name is Dr. Matt Salamone. I'm a professor at Bridgewater State University in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. I'm putting this series of videos together uh, as part of a course that I'm teaching this semester to a group of in-service high school math teachers. So these are math teachers currently working in a school system uh, that are working towards their Master of Arts in Teaching degree. Uh, and so this course is meant to expose math teachers to some ways of thinking about algebra and mathematics beyond the standard curriculum. We're going to find familiar algebra in some unfamiliar places. And the unfamiliar place where we're going to spend most of our time is in studying the mathematics of knots, links, tangles, and braids. And those are exactly what they sound like they are. They're not some mystical mathematical object. They're what we get when we try to formalize the process of twisting together a rope in some way that's closed in on itself in three dimensions. And there's a surprisingly rich amount of algebra, geometry, topology, combinatorics, even physics, biology, that all begins by just knotting up a rope. And we're going to look at just a little bit of it this semester. So what's the plan for the course? My hope is that, again, we're going to be looking for familiar algebra in unfamiliar places through the study of knots and links, diagramming and classifying knots, using knots and links to explore some elementary concepts in topology, and computing knot groups and polynomials. Um, we're going to do some inquiry-based problem solving in class. We're going to do a professional development project that will help these teachers to bring these ideas back into their classrooms and also to share them out with their fellow uh, teacher educators. Um, and kind of think about it as a study of algebraic structure through knots and links. Um, the main goals that I kind of see for us are to uncover the nature of what is algebraic thinking. What does that mean, really? Um, more than just pushing symbols around and adding one to both sides of an equation, right? Um, and a subset of that is to think about the theme of invariance. Mathematicians think a lot about invariance, which is really a question about what kinds of objects can represent other objects, and how good is that representation? What are the limitations that it has? Um, so that's the big overarching, that's goal number zero of the course. More specifically, we're going to look at how rational numbers are invariants for rational tangles. So we're going to start this semester by looking at a, a class of, of, of tangled up ropes that are called tangles, um, and how we can use a rational number, just a fraction with an integer in top and bottom, to represent a tangle. Uh, and we can get a lot of mileage out of that representation, it turns out, and we'll see how and why. Um, and then the, probably the one that's going to take us the most time is this goal number two, which is to be able to use groups and that's groups in the abstract algebra sense, as well as polynomials. Those are also polynomials in the standard algebra, abstract algebra sense. How to use those algebraic objects to not only represent, but in fact classify types of knots, types of links, types of braids. So that's going to be a, a large uh, portion of what we do this semester. Um, and then the project that we'll be working on together as a class is we're going to look for ways of reinforcing algebraic thinking beyond the standard high school math curriculum. Uh, so we'll do it first with the students in my class, which will be educators, practicing educators, get them to expand the boundaries of their algebraic thinking and what they think of as algebra, um, with then an eye towards helping to bring that sentiment into their classroom and help their high school algebra students to see that algebra is much bigger uh, than the adding one to both sides that they're consumed with in a, in a semester. Um, so that's the plan uh, for the course for this semester. Uh, it's the first time I'm teaching it, uh, so that plan may get thrown out the window after a couple weeks, who knows. Um, and as we go along, um, I want to keep the materials that we're producing and the results that we're discovering together, um, I want to keep them all open and available to the world as an open educational resource. Um, so the best place to connect with the videos that you're seeing right now, as well as the other written material that we're pulling together for the course, is through my website at mathematics.com. Don't forget to double that T slash oak. That stands for Open Algebra and Knots. So mathematics.com slash oak. Um, jump over there. Uh, we've got a copy of what I call our live textbook. It's an ever-evolving educational resource. Um, we'll be putting some uh, sort of original arrangements of topics, original problems, um, original class activities that we do. We'll all go up into that live website. Um, the source material that I'm pulling from this semester uh, is primarily two. Uh, we have one book. Uh, the Notebook by Colin Adams, who's a professor at Williams College. Um, this is a really great, this is the one I require for everyone in my class this semester, because it's a really great accessible 
any anyone with a little bit of math background can get into this book and start understanding some really deep stuff pretty quickly. Um, and it's a really easy read. So the notebook, this is one you can recommend to all your friends, even those who aren't math majors. Um, and for a little bit more of an advanced flavor, once we get along toward computing not groups and that kind of stuff, um, I also have a more compendious resource, which is blank on the front cover, but if you can read this side, um, this is Knots and Links by Dale Rolfson, who's at the University of British Columbia. Um, I think of this as the Bible of knot theory. Um, it's, a, it's a classic. It has a little bit of everything. Um, and it really goes far deeper uh, into the topic than we can go in one semester or even really one year. Um, so this is really appropriate if you really spark an interest in knot theory and you're thinking about pursuing it at a more advanced level. Um, we'll be pulling a little bit from this, but this is going to be mostly a sidecar uh, to the Adams book. Uh, so welcome. Uh, we'll be maintaining the, the running list of these uh, videos on my YouTube channel, um, and they'll also be integrated in with our live textbook at mathematics.com slash oak. Uh, so jump in, take a look at what we're doing, give us some feedback, participate, uh, and look forward to doing more with you.